Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel, Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I'm going to explain how I use the shader pen tip. I will cover controlling the darkness level, pen tip angle, and my four main burn methods that I use. My goal with this tutorial is to show you how and why I use the different burn methods. Plus, this video will allow me to prevent some redundancy in my tutorials. In future tutorials, I won't include a burn method how-to section. Instead, I will just reference this video. Now one last thing before I get started. In the remarks or the description below, I put in a table of contents. Click on any of the times listed and the video will jump to that spot. Well, the first thing we will discuss is controlling the darkness levels in pyography. So let's get started. There are three things that control the darkness level of your pyography. Pen heat, hand speed, and repetition. First, the pen heat. Okay, this one's pretty obvious, but the higher the heat setting on the burner, the hotter the pen gets and the darker the resulting burn. Second one is hand speed. The faster you move your hand, the lighter the resulting burn and vice versa. I have a short video that demonstrates this. This first line is my normal hand speed. I have the heat set just to the point where I get a nice tan color at this speed. I have increased my hand speed and this produces a lighter colored burn. Lastly, I decreased my hand speed so this last line is darker. I did not change the heat setting during this demo. The third thing is repetition. Repetition is a way of saying reburning or burning over the same area more than once. Repeatedly burning over an area will darken up that area. How long or how many times it takes is dependent on the heat setting and the hand speed used. Let's watch a video on this. As you can see from the example, I am building up the color or darkness level by repeatedly burning over the same area. This is another example of using repetition to darken a burn. Pen heat, hand speed, and repetition all go together in controlling how dark you burn. Only through practice will you discover what combination works best for you. The next thing I want to discuss is how altering the angle of the pen impacts the burn result, so let's watch that. In this demonstration, I am using the shader pen tip to burn a series of lines that get thicker or wider as I decrease the angle I am holding the pen at. I'm burning the next group of lines in a different direction to make it easier to see the angle of the pen. The steeper the angle, the thinner the line. The last thing I want to discuss is how the placement of the pen impacts the burn. In this example, I have the end of the pen tip on the edge of the line. The rest of the pen is angled over the area that will be burned. I call this optimal pen tip position and it creates clearly defined, crisp, clean edges. Plus, it helps ensure that you only burn where you intend to burn. With this next example, the end of the pen is right on top of the line instead of along its edge. This forces you to use the flat of the pen, so the lines have softer edges and they aren't as crisp and clean. This is an actual example of optimal pen tip position in my artwork called the Dewey Leaf. The pen tip is right on the edge of the leaf and the rest of the pen is angled over the background, which is the area I was going to be working on. The edges around the leaves in the background were done by burning along the top of the line. The placement resulted in softer lines without clearly defined edges. Now I'm going to explain the four main burn methods I use. They are circular motion, uniform strokes, pull away strokes, and zigzags. Keep in mind that the pen angle applies to every single burn method 
and will give you different looking results. For example, burning zigzags using the razor edge of the pin tip will look a lot different than using the flat of the pin tip. With each burn method, I will first explain what it is or how to create the burn. Then I will show you video clips from assorted projects using the burn method and explain why I chose that particular method. Circular motion is the burn method that I use most often, so we'll start with that. As you can see, I am literally burning a continuous chain of small circles. Obviously, this is a highly exaggerated example for demonstration purposes only. My next burn is what circular motion really looks like. I'm still burning a continuous chain of small circles, but the circles are much smaller and closer together. This results in a solid looking band of color. Circular motion is often used to create transitions where the color is gradually increased or decreased. One of the benefits of circular motion is that it doesn't produce straight lines or lines in general, so the transitions tend to be smoother. Another application of circular motion is to create an assortment of textures. This is usually accomplished by deliberately burning irregularities into the area. To put it another way, I am not trying to make the area uniform in color or produce gradual transitions. To do this, I use repetition along with a variety of hand speeds to introduce an assortment of tones or color in one area. My first example is a portrait of Matthew and Maggie. I use circular motion to create very soft and gradual transitions of color, especially on the skin, as I didn't want any harsh lines. My next example is the barbecue chip ornament I did. Again, I'm using circular motion to create smooth transitions along the folds and creases of the bag. With the tree frog, I use circular motion to create the soft, out of focus background texture. The entire background was done using the flat of the pin tip, lots of repetition, and a variety of hand speeds. The background texture in this next example was created by burning small patches of circular motion. The patches varied from small circular patches to short squiggly bands. I only used three or four different tonal or color variations, so this created a more subdued texture. At first glance, it looks dark, but upon closer examination, the texture detail becomes noticeable. I chose circular motion for this because it is very easy to produce an irregular random texture with it. My last example is using circular motion to create the look of rocks in my Christ of the Mines artwork. The process is very similar to the technique on the previous example, but the big difference is that I used a lot more tonal variations on the rock. Plus, the area around each rock is burned pretty dark to give the appearance of dark shadows along the cracks and crevices between the rocks. Uniform strokes are created by pulling the pin tip towards you in a slow and controlled manner. When starting a new stroke, burn it so it is adjacent to the previous stroke. Each new stroke should be touching or even slightly overlapping the previous stroke. How dark the strokes will be is dependent on how fast you're moving your hand. Uniform strokes are used to give an object a solid base color that doesn't have a lot of tonal variation to it. The first example of using uniform strokes is the dark side of the fishing trolley in the Misty Marina. The side of the boat was solid black in color and there were only a few small areas where the light reflected on it. Uniform strokes was a perfect choice to create an area of smooth, uniform color. 
Another piece of artwork that I used a lot of uniform strokes on is the old truck. The truck had a lot of places that were devoid of texture and were uniform in color. One place was the truck seats that I'm burning in during this video. One major key to creating smooth uniform color is to keep the heat lower and use repetition to build up the color until the desired darkness level is achieved. My last example is a bow I created in Wrapped Up. Each loop on the bow was made up of an assortment of uniformly colored bands. Again, this is what uniform strokes are perfect at creating. Solid, uniform color that doesn't have any texture in it. Pull away strokes are created by placing the pin tip on the line or the darkest edge of the object. Then pull the pin tip away from the line or the edge and lift up as shortly afterwards. How fast you move your hand will determine how quickly the color fades. New strokes should be touching or even slightly overlapping the previous stroke. Pull away strokes are used to give an object gradient color that starts dark and fades away. I used pull away strokes along the body of the dragonfly. Pull away strokes were a perfect choice for this because the strokes start out much darker than they end. This made the sides of the body darker than the center or the top. The contrast between dark sides and a paler center is what gave the body a rounded 3D appearance. The water in Anaconda was created using pull-away strokes along the curving lines. This produced thick lines or bands that had defined edges and gradient color. This combined with the curve of the lines gave the illusion of movement and reflected light in the water. The last example is an iris flower that I burned. The petal edges were a great place to burn pull-away strokes. The reason is that the strokes will make the petal appear curved just like they did for the dragonfly body. Also, the strokes can be used to create ruffles along the petal edges. Zigzags are created by burning a continuous chain of lines in an up-down or back-and-forth motion. Each zigzag is made up of three to seven lines, and I call this a zigzag burst. When starting a new burst, offset it from the first one. My main use of zigzags is creating short animal fur, and it's extremely important to vary the placement of each fur burst. Do not burn a long, continuous chain of zigzags, as this will not produce the desired effect. The direction of the zigzags can easily be changed to follow the growth direction of the fur. To darken an area, use repetition or reburning and apply the same basic zigzag guidelines. Vary the placement of each burst, vary the number of lines in each burst, and vary the width of the lines. If you're creating fur, make sure to burn the zigzags in the growth direction of the fur. The first example I'm going to show you are the feathers on the throat of a nut thatch. The feathers were very small and looked like strands of hair, so zigzags easily created them without forcing me to burn each hair individually. The bobcat in my next example has short fur, which is ideal for zigzags. Zigzags do not work well on long fur, so that's why I made the comment about short fur. The key to realistic fur is to follow its growth direction and use repetition to build up the tonal depth and the shadows on the fur. Zigzags are also a great option for creating distant evergreen trees. It is a simple matter of burning a vertical line to represent the tree trunk. Start at the top of the tree and burn horizontal zigzags to create the branches down the trunk. Increase the size of the zigzags the closer to the base of the tree you get. 
Distant mountains can also be created using zigzags. The bursts need to be angled towards the peak of the mountain. Abruptly changing the burst direction creates fissures and crevices on the mountain surface. That explains the four burn methods and why I use them. But I want to mention that I often combine burn methods. Now obviously I don't burn them at the same time, but rather I'll start with one method and finish with another. I want to show you a couple examples of combinations that I use. My most commonly used combination is uniform strokes and circular motion. I almost always burn along the edges of an object with uniform strokes and then fill in the area with circular motion. With the robes on the Lotus Goddess, I used uniform strokes along the creases and folds. Then I switched to circular motion to transition or fade that color away. Another common combination that I use is pull away strokes and uniform strokes. With this combination, I burn pull away strokes along the edges of the object and then fill it in with uniform strokes. So with the snell, the pull away strokes were burned along the shadowed edge of the shell to give it a curved shape. Uniform strokes were used to color the rest of the shell. The last combination I will show uses circular motion and zigzags to produce weathered tree texture. I don't use this often, but it does create a realistic texture. I work in small sections, burning circular motion, and then I burn zigzags over the area. I don't cover the area with zigzags, I just add a few here and there. There are a lot of different shader pen tips out there, and they can all do the same basic things. Which one you should use is really a matter of personal preference. Normally, I use Colwood's Tight Round J Shader. If I'm working on something small, I'll use my mini shader. In large areas like backgrounds, I often use my big shader to get the job done faster. This is what works for me. You have to discover what works best for you. That's it. Well, I hope I was able to provide some useful information on how I use the shader pen tip. In the remarks below, I've provided a link to my website, Biography Made Easy. The website has numerous blogs, tutorials, and free patterns available on it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel. I have a new video every Tuesday, and at least once a month, if not more often, I post a tutorial video. See you next week.